In Mark 8, 33, when Jesus tells Peter to, quote, get behind me, Satan, end quote, he is obviously using the term in the Old Testament sense of an oppositional role that can apply to humans and not to Peter, having been possessed by a singular cosmic arch nemesis. This seems to be reflected in some translations, such as those by N.T. Wright, wherein he prefers to use the Satan in his translation as opposed to Satan, capital S there, during New Testament exegesis, to what extent should we consider the authors to have intended the use of role as opposed to singular cosmic arch nemesis? Furthermore, should there be a clear delineation between Satan and Diablos, or is it much more murky given they appear conflated in the Septuagint? Yeah, I, th I think I'd say, first of all, I, I do agree, you know, with the, uh, the adversarial sense uh, behind what Jesus is saying here to Peter. I don't think there's any contextual argument for presuming that uh, Peter was Satan, uh, you know, that he was like turned into or viewed as, you know, Satan, the cosmic you know, nemesis. I also don't see any, uh, any contextual argument that he was possessed. I mean, where you get that elsewhere, the language is pretty clear about Satan entering into, you know, someone like Judas or something like that. So I don't think that's intended at all. And I do think what is intended is, again, the, the, the term being used essentially saying, you know, hey, Peter, don't oppose me. Don't be an adversary, you know, to what I've just said and what, what's coming down the road. So I think uh, Wright and others, of course, it's not, you know, something that only he has noticed. But I think I think that's the consistent way to view it. You know, the whole question about dis, uh, distinguishing between Satan and Diabolos, I mean, the equation is certainly made in the New Testament, but it's all about context, you know. So, if you have a situation where one or the other term is used, especially if it's you know Satan, then I think you have to look at context. Is this a neutral use of the term, or does it refer to an entity? And I mean, I've, I've actually looked this up, and it, it, you can't you can't really determine it uh, through um, morphology alone or, or the use of the definite article because. In Greek, anyway, you know, Greek is not Hebrew, so the stuff about the definite article that I have in the book about an unseen realm about Satan, where the article doesn't really apply here because it's a different language. But you will have instances where sat uh, Satanos, okay, Greek there, uh, occurs with or without the article, where the context clearly points to a specific individual, again, the the devil or or some other term that's applied to him. So it, it's not there's no neat breakdown there. And Diabolos, the devil, is certainly used of Satan in the New Testament. But does that mean everywhere that we see one term, Satan, that we need to think of the other? Well, you know, not necessarily. And I think Mark 8.33 is a good instance of that. Uh, and that overlap in terms, you know, does does start in the Septuagint. But again, it you, you can't just say, you can't look at a trend or a phenomenon and say, well, I see this trend or phenomenon here. So everywhere, you know, I run into the same term, I have to think this way. Uh, again, that that isn't the case. You know, trends are trends, phenomena are, are phenomena with, you know, even with, with outliers, you know, to deal with. And, and you certainly have outliers here. So context is always king. Uh, you, you try to determine what is the best sense, the best semantic sense of the term in any given context. And you can't impose a meaning that would work in one context with all the other contexts.